Hey everyone, monthly update time. I wanted to start off with a quote that a user from the forum sent me. Hold on, let me pull it up here. Um, this is just a part of it, and it, it really uh, underlined what I'm trying to do, what we are trying to do, and what we are accomplishing. Quote, I not only learned a huge amount of technical things since I discovered Kinograph, I also learned a lot about humanity, cooperative work, and creativity. Ah, yes, I almost cried. That is exactly what we're here for, and I'm so glad to get that feedback. Thank you, you know who you are who sent it. Uh, moving on to other things. Um, we are incredibly close to taking pictures with Kinograph. And I have pictures that I will show you here. Um, but what I mean is we have almost all the parts in place to hook up the industrial camera that I have to a PC, which has now arrived and is assembled and plug it all together and see if we can get some shots. They won't be perfect, they'll be far from it, but it's a big step. Um, so how did we get there? What happened this month? Uh, there, is a, there was a video posted about a new film path. I will link that in the comments here if you have not seen it already. You'll also notice uh, I tried some black plastic for the back of uh, the machine that's not working you can't see anything back there like even when the lights are on it's terrible so we're going to get rid of that but i did buy a couple sheets so you're going to continue to see it um, all of the aesthetics are to be determined anyway um, i also found a new vendor for a fabrication material specifically a 3d printing filament that has all of the properties of um, a nylon plastic like delrin also um, I sketched out that new tension roller design. Hopefully you saw that. If not, you'll see them in a clip of, uh, towards the end here and got two of those made and, and uh, up on the machine. I also had a really good discussion with a member from the forums one-on-one -on -one about how to evaluate scan quality. This is a good moment for everyone to know that I am not an archivist. I, am, I don't know what a great scan looks like. If I can see the movie, and I understand what's happening in it, then to me that's a good scan because Kinograph is about access, not preservation or perfection. Um, but I also understand that that is probably a lower bar than most people have, at least the ones that are paying attention now. So what this person was really helpful in doing for me was educating me on what made a good scan, what to look for. Uh, and it brought a lot of things to, uh, to my attention, including the eventual need for some software. Uh, there are a lot of options out there that will help us, and I think we should use as many third-party options as we can, because software production is, and development is costly and timely. Uh, we, we won't have to deal with costs, because it's all going to be open source and volunteer-based, but it's going to take a lot of time. So things, what am I talking about? Things like... Uh, fixed noise pattern reduction, banding adjustment masks, uh, figuring out different ways to deal with negative versus uh, positives. So those are all things that we can keep track of. And the main reason I'm bringing this up, if you have tuned me out, tuned back in, is do not assume that I or anyone else knows what we're doing. This is a place to learn, very much in line with that quote I started out with. I need to learn in order to make a better machine. Other people who are trying to learn the technical parts of this uh, are going to want to learn as well. So please, whenever you're sharing on the forums, or if you haven't yet, this is your chance. Just do a quick post, like everything I know about soundtracks or um, Kodak versus whatever, uh, and the aging of magentas, I don't know. I would love to hear about that stuff because I need to know and it's going to help everybody else. Okay, next thing. Uh, there's also a great conversation going on in the forums around new camera options and I've made a new uh, comparison chart of camera options. There are two tabs to it. One is only FLIR cameras because they have so many options for our uh, use case and then I've branched out into a couple of other companies and that link is also in the description. Uh, I, as you can tell, I am not in my home. I am traveling, and while I'm out here in California, if you must know, 
I will be working on a few things. I'm gonna be here for about two weeks uh, doing some family stuff and I feel very lucky to be doing that. I'm gonna be doing a few things. I'm gonna be cleaning up some CAD stuff that just really needs to be cleaned up. Uh, I'm also gonna work on a new front-loaded flat gate design. If you remember uh, the flat gate, which is the thing that presses down on the film if it's really warped, comes in from the side like this in line with the path of the film. But when I tried it with uh, the new film path and two fully loaded 35 millimeter reels, I couldn't get in there to put it in. So I want to figure out a way to put it in and uh, sort of hinge it down. And I have a couple of ideas for that. If you have some or you have pictures of gates that you've used and that you like that do that, let me know. So it would close perpendicular to the film path. Uh, I also want to cat out the low cost perforation sensor. That's just with a uh, laser diode, a plate with a tiny hole in it, and then a, a uh, light sensor on the other side, a photodiode. And I have some video coming up about that. And I'm gonna do another round of motor research uh, around brushed DC motors. There's some annoyance right now. Using the worm gear motors is really great because it provides us a lot of power with not a lot of motor. But you can't do things like on the take up side, you can't just like spin it backwards a little bit to give yourself some slack. You have to take it off. You have to disengage the reel, then do it, then re-engage it. Uh, the cap stand can't spin backwards if you need to adjust that. That might stay worm gear, I don't know. But uh, if we find some motors that do the thing that uh, I want them to, then might as well try them out. Last thoughts we are getting very close to some real practical troubleshooting. We're getting out of the realm of what ifs and we're getting into the realm of does this work? And I'm very excited about it. To that end, I don't know if we're going to make uh, a full beta design lock in spring. It might be beginning of summer, but overall I don't think we're that far behind. So things are looking good. I hope you all are well as well. And please send me what you're thinking about, what you're hoping to see, what you're excited about, or uh, rants, raves, whatever you want. Okay, see you next time. All right, a quick tour of the PC we're gonna use to run the tests. I'm shooting for kind of middle of the road. You could definitely spend a lot more money on a faster PC. Uh, you could also theoretically use you know, your MacBook or your ThinkPad. It, you would just have to run the machine slower to handle all of the pixels that are flowing in. So this is run of the mill. I'm, I want to see how many frames per second we can get with this. So I've got a AMD5 chip on a micro ATX board. If this doesn't mean anything to you, then you can just skip past this part. Um, 32 gigs of RAM here. I've got um, a donated GPU from Brandon Parvini. Check the credits for his work. He's doing some awesome stuff in the NFT space right now. Also got a pretty run-of-the-mill power supply. It's not modular, so there's a bunch of extra cables in there. And for storage, you could fit, in this case, I think about three hard drives. So if you put, you know, 12 terabytes on each drive in there, you'd have a lot of good space. Uh, right now, I just have one terabyte of um, storage in there on an SSD, but we will beef that up. I also wanted to mention material choice for the gate and um, the pressure rails for the flat gate. These are the gates that are uh, used for different gauges. 35 gets its own, 16 gets its own. And what's important about these is that one, that they're made out of a material that is slippery, doesn't cause a lot of friction, and two, is easy to recreate if I disappear or uh, you don't have a CNC machine or something like that. So that was my first attempt was to make these out of a CNC machine. This is a material called Delrin. It machines easily and it's got a nice low friction coefficient and it works pretty well. Uh, it makes a big mess. And again, you either need to have this machine or you're gonna have to pay me to ship it to you. And if I'm sick or dead or busy, <laughs> Um, that's going to be a problem. Uh, the other option is, I did a little bit of research and there is a 3D printer filament that has the same friction coefficient and it's very close to Delrin. I think it's advertised as a, basically a Delrin replacement for 3D printers and it works pretty well. It's nice and slick. Um, it required a few design changes, but it does work. I need to work on my settings because you can see a little bit of warp there. 
Um, but I think this is going to work well too. I just ordered some black samples and I'm going to try to tweak the settings, make sure it works correctly. The last one, um, and it, it, it is related uh, to the gate as well as these rails. And this is also Delrin, but it has um, oil infused into it, um, which is self-lubricating, which was nice. But again, um, you know, although it is really nice, maybe it's an upgrade material um, that you could order from me uh, in small batches or whatever, or I'll make them in small batches and make them available. But otherwise you could use this stuff. Um, the company that makes this is IGUS, I-G-U-S, and they are uh, based in Europe, but also have uh, shipping facilities and representatives in North America, and I think Asia too, but I'm, I can't say for sure. I'd have to check their website. Okay, I also want to show off um, the new capstan layout is much lower on the machine overall, so I had to move the rotary encoder from underneath to the side. Not, I don't have any plans to actually use this right now, um, but it's there just in case and to show that you can add whatever you want to this axle. And this is the main capstan axle. Uh, this is the motor. This will probably get swapped out with a brushed DC motor for reasons I will explain shortly. And then this is where the PCB would be mounted. And all of these connections for the encoder and this would go in here. And then this would go to the, the mother PCB. So on the other side, we've got this awesome handcrafted capstan. It's nice and wide, made out of aluminum. It's machined. Um, it has this removable uh, soft vinyl, very harmless to film cover. So you could take it off and wash it. Um, you could, but you could probably take the whole thing off and wash it unless the, um, unless the screws that, that uh, bind it to this axle are lead. Jeff, let me know. I'll credit Jeff in the, um, in the notes here. Very cool work by him, very exciting too. You can see here we've got two alignment rollers on either side of the gate as well. And just looking straight down at the gate, we might be moving the gate back this way. I'd like to reduce the strain on the axle overall. And the only reason it's out so far now is uh, this sphere. But I've been experimenting with cutting out a hole in the back so you can move it uh, closer to the panel. I think that's what we're going to do. The other thing that was keeping us from doing that before were the uh, tension hubs. Uh, but since we're no longer using those, here's what I mean, uh, these guys. Uh, for, <laughs> and I haven't shown you what I want to replace it with, but um, I should have designs posted soon for your feedback on that. Um, and it won't require all of the depth that, that did. All right, that's it for now. So the tension hub design we were using for detecting tension worked great. Um, basically the film went under and over and as the tension increased, it would force a rotation of this hub. That rotation was transferred through these arms back to this disc where it was attached to a potentiometer that detects, um, it's like a knob and transfers that rotation into a number which was great, but it requires all of these parts, two rollers, which takes up a bunch of space on a machine that doesn't really have a lot of space. And so I was trying to think of something to do with one roller. Now, Jeff Conter, who also is the guy who gave us this, uh, this perforation sensor, was telling me about something he was working on, which was a, a single, um, single roller that could replace that. And he didn't give me any of his secrets. So I thought, about it and uh, it occurred to me that this is one very basic possible solution and I would love your feedback on it. But basically um, this is this would be bolted to a platform that's also circular but just you know just a little bit larger than the roller itself. And you would have two other rollers here. Now I know what you're thinking. Three rollers, that's more than two. But these two rollers are being used for other stuff. So we're really just adding one. Like it's gonna go that way anyway. Um, see the film path video if that doesn't make any sense. But bolt it into here, and let's say the film is going under here, and the other two rollers are here. That means, oh, sorry, backwards. They're here. The film is going under it or over this way. That means that the the film, when it gets tight, is gonna, in very small, almost invisible ways put stress on this roller that way. 
So if we have a little, let's say like an, a rubber ring attached to the plate that it's resting on, that tension is gonna get transferred into that rubber ring. And if we have a little force sensor underneath it, we can sense how much force is being pushed into that. The nice thing about this is you can put these anywhere and all you have to do is move where the sensor is. Um, let's say it's on a PCB that's in a ring shape. You just rotate that, mount it, and then you're good to go. Um, you might need something that's a little higher in the middle than the O-ring so that it has a little bit of pivot to it already. Um, so I found these washers. These are, are rubber and flexible at the hardware store and that worked pretty well. I also found these. These are something to do with kitchen sinks and plumbing. Um, you could do it that way, put, the, put that on the platform. So let me know what you think of that idea.